Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be looking at some of the most interesting mechanics in RuneScape and the different types of systems that actually existed but do not anymore. Now this list is actually pretty interesting because it dives deep into the early days of RuneScape and takes a look at some of the really crazy things. I mean honestly some of the stuff that I find are really unbelievable. The decisions that Jagex took back then really meant huge changes for RuneScape as a game. But without further ado, let's actually jump straight into the list so you can explore and see the different things that used to exist in RuneScape. Now the thing with RuneScape is that it's a very different game within its own genre of being an MMORPG, because the biggest and most common aspect of an RPG is the class system which RuneScape, as we all know, doesn't have. But wait, if I told you that it was a part of RuneScape Classic, what would you think? Well that's the thing, it was. Originally, there was actually classes which players would choose from. This feature was removed in early July of 2002, and Tutorial Island was released in the following September. This was actually the first big change that made RuneScape what it is today, which is absolutely crazy. Now depending on the class you chose, new players would start with a higher level in the appropriate skill as to compensate for the lower skill levels in other areas, basically a normal class system. Now let me explain this a little, a miner would for example start with level 5 mining but would also start with 9 hit points, there's actually an enormous list of various classes, it was very very impressive and showed how much time and effort Jagex put into actually making these classes, this was something they really pushed and really wanted. It was really a part of the original RuneScape plan, they wanted to take a route for a more classical MMORPG, now like I just mentioned, there is a lot of classes, I'm going to go over them very very quickly because we don't want to take a huge portion of this video just looking over classes, but let's look into them regardless. Now starting us off, we had the Necromancer which started out with a black wizard hat and a regular staff. Then the wizard started out with a blue, later black, wizard hat and a regular staff. Next the warrior had 3 attack, 3 strength, 3 defense, 12 hit points, and started out with a bronze short sword and a wooden shield. There was also the miner, 7 mining, started out with a pickaxe which at the time was the only type available, these were later turned into bronze pickaxes though. After came the ranger which was 12 hit points, started out with a short bow and 10 arrows, these later became bronze arrows after the release of the flinching skill and the multiple arrow types. There was also the adventurer which had 2 attack, 2 strength, 2 defense, and started out with a tinder box, a bronze hatchet, and 1 piece of cooked meat. After the class system was removed, all the players started out with a bronze axe, cooked meat, and tinderbox, and thus the birth of the unique MMORPG that we know today, RuneScape. With all that being said, we have the next unique function within RuneScape Classic. Now this is a weird one, let, let me be honest here. Originally players could not use ranged weapons when engaged in melee combat. It's, it's definitely an interesting mechanic, and thankfully it no longer exists. The thing is that the arrow projectile was instead represented as a green splotch. Now I don't know exactly how to think about this or what to think about it, but it's definitely insane because a form of weapon, even though it's a ranged weapon, a form of weapon could not be used in combat in general is a weird mechanic, so you couldn't use your bow if someone came and meleeed you. It must have really sucked for any ranged player to just get jumped on from behind and quickly engage in melee combat and would basically render them useless, unless they can get away somehow of course, but it's definitely a poor design, but I can't hate too much since obviously Jagex saw this poor design and changed it. Now our next interesting mechanic was actually influenced by the predecessor for quest points. The only way to gain influence was to complete quests. A player who had higher influence level could for example sell silk to the silk trader for more coins than usual. Influence was since removed from RuneScape Classic in favor of the now used quest points. Now I think it makes a lot more sense that Jagex did this as it fit RuneScape a lot better and the game has heavy influence around quest points, it's also just generally more intuitive and a lot smoother because RuneScape's economy would also kind of shift if having influence would allow you to gain, sell, buy for different prices. Now another key difference that's also super super odd was that plate could not be worn at the same time as gloves and on the opposite end you couldn't wear legs if you were already wearing boots. However, chainmail would avoid this rule, if a character wore chainmail then they could wear gloves. This meant some PKers preferred to wear chain in order to wear gloves and get the slight attack boost gained at the expense of some defense. Now this is not only an odd mechanic, but very weird. It was obviously put into place as some sort of weird balancing system for Jagex. I think it was intended to uh, have the player choose over certain pieces and combinations, so I would combine for example my chest and leggings, or I'd have to choose over the gloves but get rid of uh, the chest. I'm not too sure, but it's definitely very very weird, 
and very anti-intuitive. I mean, considering base logic, if I was a new player and I worked my ass off for a set of armor, I definitely would expect to be able to wear every piece of that armor altogether. However, in the nature of an MMORPG, I think it was probably the best move for Jagex to completely remove this mechanic. Now, going even further back, in the very, 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 very early stages of RuneScape Classic, we had an equipment stat once called Hiding. <laughs> being a sneaky sneaky assassin was actually possible. It was originally intended to be used in order to hide from aggressive monsters. More specifically, the higher your hide stat was, the less likely an aggressive monster was to attack you. It was of course later removed. With that being said, I don't actually think this one was a very bad mechanic. I mean, it was weird, but not as, not as game-breaking or unintuitive as the others. Now, I do think it's kind of cool, but that's just my opinion. There's no real way of knowing why Jagex removed this feature, but I think they just kind of found it too gimmicky inside a game such as RuneScape. Now, another difference in early RuneScape Classic was that players didn't actually need any sort of attack or defense requirement for any type of weapon or armor. This allowed for pure PKers to have one attack and one defense with literally full ruin. Now, let's be honest here, this is obviously horrible and sounds absolutely ridiculous. RuneScape is definitely unique within its genre, but that sounds extremely counterintuitive to the whole feeling of leveling your character, and most importantly, would have absolutely removed the feeling of reward, grind, and progress that RuneScape presents now. Now, another thing that actually exists in RuneScape is certificates. Now, before RuneScape 2, trading large numbers of items was much more of a hassle. Now, the only way to create stackable items out of items that weren't originally stackable was to actually turn them into certificates, or certs for short. Lobsters, sharks, coal, and certain logs could all be traded for certs. Five items were the equivalent to a single certificate. This could be done by heading over to what's now known as Draenor Village Market and either talking to Niles, Giles, or Miles. In RuneScape 2, these certs were replaced by notes, which can be withdrawn from a bank in the form of a piece of paper. This had the picture of the item and the total number on it, the, no the total number of uh, how much you stacked on it. Many items can be withdrawn using this method. With the creation of the new random events, Niles, Giles, and Miles can be seen making cameos within these events. The crazy thing is instead of updating or improving the system until this day, certs is actually still the only way to transfer a large amount of items within RuneScape Classic. It's very, <laughs> it's definitely a little bit annoying. It could be worse, to be fair, but it definitely could be used, uh, you could, it could definitely use revising. Another big, big difference, which is honestly I find the most interesting, is PKing in RuneScape Classic. It was simply very different. Every single weapon had the same speed, so Rune 2 Handsword was pretty much used by every single free to play PKer. Members mainly used the dragon weapons or the mage arena staves. Once attacked, a player couldn't run away for exactly three rounds of combat. This meant that players would fight using two primary strategies. The first strategy was actually players who would simply work hard to get high enough strength and in turn just kill their opponents in three hits. <laughs> very blatant strategy, very effective strategy, they can't run away if you kill them. I mean there wasn't even running in RuneScape Classic, so catching was actually a vital skill back then. The second biggest strategy for players who couldn't simply 3-shot the enemy would actually be keeping their opponents in battle by cancelling their attempt to escape. Whew, now let me explain how that works. In order to stop them from getting away, they'd time their attack with the opponent's attempt at running away. In result, as soon as the opponent would try to escape, they would immediately be trapped in the fight for another whole 3 rounds. I have to say that the older PKing honestly was scary as hell. A player who wasn't ready to fight and got trapped within a battle would be super spooked out and would panic. I mean, I would personally probably just die because I wouldn't be prepared. And the thing is that the scary PvP just doesn't stop there. You could also originally only eat outside of combat. This made things super hectic as players would uh, wait for a chance to run away only so they could eat and then they'd begin gobbling down as much as possible as they ran <laughs> in circles trying to escape the opponent, then when they were ready, they would re-enter combat again. There was also a huge number of wine peers, who were peers that decreased their attack level below 8 using the wine trick in order to gain pure attack experience from hitting dummies in Varrock. A slight advantage to this was that they could lower their HP compared to traditional peers, 
while their strength would remain higher. If they hit a first in combat, they would be able to hit one or two damage more, thus having a greater chance of three hitting somebody as the first strategy we talked about. However, with the RS2 update, the functionality of dummies altogether was completely removed as it looks at your max attack level rather than your current. Now, I just mentioned scary PvP and another huge thing that even further expands on this idea was that player killing was not limited to the wilderness. The only place where players could even be safe from others was in Lumbridge or if they were designated themselves as a NPK non-player killers. The problem was that the second option could only be changed twice, and was eventually taken out of the game, meaning for a while PvP was scarier than ever as you couldn't run, eating was very tricky, people would 3 shot, and you basically couldn't hide anywhere. So. Yeah, basically it became a horror game for a little bit. Dueling was also very different, as it used to be possible at any location, at any time, provided that both duelers were in a member's world, all they'd have to do is right click a player and click duel. It would be an option just like walk here or follow or trade. It was actually often used as a cheap and easy way to return to Lumbridge, since dying in a duel would send the player back there, but if nothing was staked, nothing would be lost. This made Lumbridge a hotspot for duels. Unlike the other mechanics we've mentioned, many players actually complained about the removal of this feature, which was removed because of the introduction of running in RS2. Players could now run during any point of battle without ending the battle itself. Players would be able to fight all around the world or bank the staked items if they were not moved to the duel arena. Another thing players liked about the ability to duel anywhere in the world was actually because if someone came over to take your spot, you could challenge them to a duel for who gets to stay there instead of switching worlds to find a less crowded area to train. With that being said, that actually just about wraps up the video for today. If you guys enjoyed, then hit the like button. I'm still reading feedback and I'm gonna say this every video because I need to remind you guys that commenting down below, uh, giving me tips, giving me advice is something that means a lot and it's something that I'm not only listening to but applying as fast as possible. Some videos are recorded in advance, so some feedback might only appear two or three videos later, but with that being said, I'm still trying my hardest. Thank you for all the love and support. Hit that subscribe button for future content. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.